Assalamu alaikum students, this is Farwa Batul, your O-level computer science instructor and welcome to another video. Here we are going to start another chapter that is chapter number 8, Programming. It is going to be a very, very important chapter because here you are going to learn different programming concepts that you can use in your future when you will be making programs. So before starting, just looking at the content overview of the chapter, let me tell you that what is the word programming means. Okay, the word programming means that it is a process of making programs. Now you will be asking me that what is a program? A program is basically the set of instructions. Let me quickly write for you. It's set of instructions. instructions that you give to a computer to a computer to perform different tasks tasks so these are the programs that are going to help a computer to do different kind of task for us. So this is going to be very inter interesting that in programming, in this chapter, you will be learning to instruct the computer what to do. So what are the key concepts? Let me quickly tell you the content overview that what actually you are going to learn in this chapter. Okay, let me just quickly tell you that there are two kind of programming languages. One is a low level language that is machine friendly and the other one is a high level language. So in this chapter, we are going to do work on a high level language because this is more user friendly. The first thing about high level language, it is user friendly. The code is easily understandable you can easily design programs because the code is very easy and understandable for the programmer okay and the types of high level languages that are mentioned in your book are python you can make a program on python java or visual basic you have three different options visual basic okay so let's quickly move towards the content overview here you will be in this chapter you are going to be learning different programming concepts so let me quickly write down that here we will be le learning the basic programming concepts now let me quickly list down these concepts one by one the first thing that you will be learning is the use of variables and constants let me quickly tell you that what are variable and constants these are the named data stores yes it means that these are the places in the memory that are going to store your data let's suppose your name it depends upon the data types that you are going to use. So the second thing is your data types. There are different data types. It can be integers, numbers, it can be character, it can be boolean, true, false, it can be uh, the whole sentence that my name is Farwa that you can store in the memory location. So we will be learning that what are the different type of data that we can use in programs. So this refers to the data types. Now the third thing is, these are the input and output statements. And output statements. The input and output statements are basically 
used in order to get that's a, let's suppose this is your system if you want to get some input from the user you don't know the name of the user or you don't know the date of birth of the user so if you want to take any input from the user you will be using input statements and once you will calculate your results you have to show some kind of data you have to display something to the user. Whenever you want to show something on your screen as a display message to the user, you will be using your output statements. So this is very, very important, the input and output statements. Next to it is your sequence. Sequence. Sequence in programming is basically known as the ordering of your steps ordering of these steps in an algorithm or a program when you design a program you need to consider that the order of your instructions must be uh, correct if any one of the statement is uh, having a wrong order then it can lead to incorrect results so we need to be very uh, careful about the ordering of the steps in an algorithm or a program that we are designing next to sequence is your selection it's a very important technique selection leads you to the different routes of our program depends upon the conditions let's suppose let me just quickly give you let's suppose there is a variable that you are checking the values of and you say that if the value is a equals to one then you have to do some other work if the value of a is two you have to do some other work and if the value is three then you have to do some other work so there is a choice there there are going to be the different routes of your program depends upon the conditions this is what the selection statements are used for Sometimes the user gives us input and according to his input, we have to choose a certain route in a program. So we can do it by using if then else statements and also the case statements. These are the two concepts or two ways of doing selection in the program. Okay, so the next thing after selection is going to be your iteration. Iteration enables you to repeat a certain section of your program. Let's suppose you have made a program in which some of your code needs to be repeated 10 times maybe. So iteration is the one is a technique that is going to help you in order to repeat a certain code and it helps you to save your time so that you will not be writing the same line of code again and again and for iteration we are going to use the loop structures and there are different kind of loop structures in your syllabus we will be learning three different loop structures the first one is going to be a count controlled loop where you know that how many times the iteration must goes on okay this is the count control loops then you have precondition loops where the condition will be checked first then you will be running the code precondition loops and then the third one is going to be a post condition loop it means that the work will be done one time and after that the condition will be checked and depends upon the condition you will going to iterate in the next step so these are the different loop structures that you will be studying in this chapter next to iteration is we have counting and totaling and counting totaling and counting are very much used in different kind of programs the purpose of totaling is to get a sum of certain things let's suppose you have done some shopping and now you want to see the total price that you have to pay to the seller so totaling can be of different types like you can total the price of the different items you can total the marks of the student in all the subjects like that and the next thing is counting counting is basically when you want to know uh, how many items you have in a stock or how many books are there in the library 
and how many students are there and how many times you have to iterate a certain code. So that is where the counting is being used. Okay, next to totaling and counting, you have string handling. Yes, it is very important. String handling. Let me quickly tell you that what is a string? A string is basically a data type that stores uh, more than one character or it can store numbers, it can store um, like symbols as well. So let's suppose I am storing Farva is a good girl. So this is something that I can store in one of the string that I can name as data. Let's suppose the string name is data and it is storing Farva is a good girl. You can also store symbols or you can store any other number numeric value in the string as well. Now the string handling uh, means that there are different uh, we can say methods that you are using in order to um, handle these strings that are being used in your programs either you can use the process of length yes you can find out the length of your string it is being used when sometimes the user gives you an input and you don't know that how long it is so you can use the uh, procedure of length in order to find out how long the string is then you can use substring a substring method or procedure is being used in order to extract a certain part of the string let's suppose you want to extract the name of the user so you will tell the starting and the last point uh, the index of the string and then you can take out that certain part of a string then you can use upper and lower methods the upper is basically used in order to make all the letters capital in your string and the lower is being used in order to make all the letters characters in a lower case small in your string so these are the string handling methods that we will be using um, they are by default they are built in in and we can call them library routines uh, in your software where you are going to make programs sometimes these are the built-in methods that only you are going to use by the names so you are not going to make it yourself they are already made and you have to just use them using a uh, syntax the appropriate syntax for different methods for the length for substring for upper lower uh, methods you have to use a certain code the syntax must be correct so next we have are the arithmetic logical and boolean operators let me quickly write it for you after string handling we will be learning about arithmetic logical and boolean operators let's discuss them one by one first one is the arithmetic operators that are being used for calculations they can include your plus minus multiplication division or raise to the power taking mod or the division these kind of different uh, methods or sorry operators that you can use to calculate uh, different data so this is the arithmetic operators next to arithmetic operators we have the logical ones that includes your greater than for the logical ones we have the greater than the less than equals to greater than equals to less than equals to and not equals to these are the different comparison operators that we use as the logical operators and sometimes they are being used in your uh, condition statements when you are using if then else and when you are using the loop structures there is a very much use of these logical 
operators. Next, we have the Boolean operators. Boolean operators are basically your AND, OR and NOT operators. We have already covered the chapter of Boolean logic in which you, uh, I think you must be quite clear about these. <clears throat> AND means that both the conditions needs to be true. Both needs to be true. OR means that you can either one of two conditions needs to be true, not both of them. And not means that it will be going to be an inverse or not true um, of a certain value. So these are also being used in your condition statements. Uh, now let's quickly move towards the next topic that is use of nested statements. Nested statements are used in order to save your line of code these are basically the if i talk about the definition then uh, your selection like if then else case statements and your iteration statements your loop structures are nested one inside the other you can have one if then else and inside one if you can have another if then else statements. So this is what we call the nested statements. Condition under the condition. And same you can have a, a for loop inside another for loop. So when you are going to have two for loops one inside the other we call them the nested loops. They are very very effective because uh, it's a powerful method reducing the amount of code that needs to be written and makes it simpler for a programmer to test different programs. So we will see it in detail that what, how can you make the nested statements and where is the use of these statements. Next to it is your procedures. The procedures and the functions are basically the things that you make once and yet you can use them twice or as many times as you want. Let me give you a, an example of that. Let's suppose you have to calculate the percentage of maybe 200 students, percentage of the students in the whole batch. So what you can do, you can make a method of percentage in which you are going to input the numbers of the users and then there will be a certain line of code that will be repeated every time whenever you want to calculate the percentage of a certain person or a student. So this saves your time. Once you make the function, you can call it by its name. You can call percentage and the percentage will be calculated but the only thing you have to input is the number of the students so that it will calculate the percentage in its code, in the code inside. So these are the procedures, the functions and the parameters that you give inside the functions. It has a very important use. So you can do it in different kind of ways. You can make the uh, procedure of like you are maybe calculating some total, totaling, total, you are calculating the average of maybe 200 students. So this is what you can do. You can make a function once and you can use them as many times as you want. Okay, so next to procedure and functions, we have library routines. Library routines are actually the methods that are built in. These are the methods that you use, but you don't create them. They are built in in your uh, IDE, Integrated Development Environment, that you are using in order to program. Or in other words, it is basically the programming language development system that you use. For example, for Java, if I use IntelliJ, uh, then what is done actually in that particular software, there are some libraries that are built in and in order to use those libraries, there are library routines within that libraries. So let's suppose for string that we have already discussed, in order to use the string methods, you have to include a library for Java that is basically, you have to use this 
syntax import java dot language dot string it's the library for string handling methods so once you import that in your program then you can use the length string method you can use the upper and the lower method and also there are other string handling methods substring that you can use whatever the library routines are there in this library you can use them once you import that okay more examples can be can be your arithmetic functions like you can use mod let me quickly write for you mod is a library routine division these are the arithmetic functions you can use the round method you can use the random method these are built in in your programming development language development systems so these are the library routines these are just the methods that are built in and you can just use them by importing the library for that in your program next we have after library routines a programmer must know that how to create a maintainable program creating a maintainable program is going to help the other programs in order to read your program in future if they want some amendments some changes in the program so it includes writing the program in a very nice way um and including the comments comments are very important when you include comments after the code let's suppose you have written a line of code that is a quite difficult one you must write a comment so that the other person or the other programmer will understand your code by reading that comment so this makes your program a little maintainable so even sometimes it happens that when a programmer creates his code and after one year or two year when he starts reading the code then he is going to feel some difficulty in reading that but by creating a maintainable program including comments on that it will be easier for you as well in order to understand your code when you are going to read it after a long time next we have arrays arrays is a very very important chapter arrays are basically the data structures that stores your data but the good thing about arrays is they are storing same type of data one after the other let's suppose you have an array of 5 items so it will be going to start from 0 1 2 3 4 and all of these boxes are going to contain the same data type let's suppose it's the array of names of students student names so all of these boxes are going to have different student names farwa sana ali uh, ahmed and hira so this is how the array works it is a data structure that is containing several elements of the same data type in this course you are going to learn about one dimensional array and also the two dimensional arrays two dimensional array is going to be like the tables in which you will be having multiple columns two dimensional arrays so we will discuss that in detail how you can fetch the information how you can enter the information into your array how you can you can go to a certain position in the array so all of that next to arrays is your file handling topic the file handling means that how you can create a file in java program and there are some kind of file handling methods as well that you must be learning how to create a file how to write a file how you can open and close a file and how you can read a file so this is how uh, the file handling methods will work we will see them one by one and this is all about the chapter 
chapter number 8 programming and uh, we will be focusing on each of these topics in detail so it's a very very lengthy chapter but all of these concepts are very important in order to build up programs so i hope that i will deliver this chapter in a very nice way so stay tuned stay connected in the next video i will be installing uh, an ide for java so that we can easily program on that so stay tuned do not forget to subscribe the channel bye bye